Okay, hello everyone. So my name is uh, Patrick Paul Walsh. Um, so I have a little job here. I have just a few things to say. Uh, the first thing is obviously a huge welcome to everyone uh, from the hosts, which is the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and also the Global Association of MDP or Master of Development Practice Programs. Uh, so everybody's very welcome today. Um, yesterday was a, I think, a very successful day in Faculty House. Uh, and I'm very, again, a lot of appreciation to the scientific committee who organized all the papers, but most importantly, congratulations to all the presenters. There was high energy, and it's great to see the MDP students and master students from across the network in general and staff uh, presenting such excellent work. And we will have best paper awards announced at the end of today at 5 p.m. So if you think you're going to win a best paper, remember to stay till the end of the conference. Um, so I want to do a few housekeeping things first. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, this is a free conference for, for most of the students, etc. Um, and I just want to thank the sponsors. So in particular, Arta Grande Padula, 3M, EDF, the Columbia World Leaders Forum, the Kapuskinsi Development Lecture Series, which is European Commission and UNDP, Unilever, and Gitti Group. Um, so we are very appreciative of the, the funding and sponsorship of this uh, conference. The next thing I want to say is that we're a very proud member. Uh, this ISCD joined up with the Global Citizen and Climate Week uh, 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 events, and we are very, very proud to be part of that uh, this year. Um, so what I want, just for the only way to ask questions to people on the stage is to actually go onto Twitter. So if you go onto hashtag ICSD2019, hashtag ISD2019, you can actually ask questions. And the moderators will be monitoring that, and they will be picking up questions from, from the Twitter, from the hashtag feed. So if you have questions, it's very, very important uh, to use the hashtag ICSD2019. And this segment of the conference is, will also have the Kapuskinski lectures, so you might want to use hashtag CAP talks. That's going to be quite important as well, because then people from the European Commission and the UMDP can follow the conversation as well. Um, so lunch today uh, will be on your own, but you can ask at the desk or go to the website to get great ideas where to go. And there's lots of free stuff seemingly at the back that you're, that you're free to take. Um, so I just want to say something a little bit motivational and then introduce uh, 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 the, the, somebody from the European Commission. Right? Um, so one thing we can be very proud of, SDSN, is uh, a man called David Smith, Professor David Smith. Um, he was one of the scientists, one of the expert scientists, the 12 scientists who wrote the Global Sustainable Development Report, uh, which has been highlighted uh, in, the, in the General Assembly this week. Okay? So for the first time, the HLPF, which is normally under the auspice of the Economic and Social Council, is actually at the General Assembly because we wanted to actually have all the work done on the SDGs presented to the leaders. And one thing that's center stage over the, over the two days is that the suggestions in the framework offered by the Sustainable Development Report is very much dictating the dialogues and the work program and the motivation over the two days of the SDG Summit. And we can be very proud of David Smith as one of the architects of that, and he will be on stage later on when John Waits chairs a science policy interface session. Um, there's two points that come from this. When we were listening to the young activists, um, a couple of points came out. Uh, one is that we have to move away from this sort of negative story of tipping points where we know the science, where if we don't get something done, we're going to have irreversible consequences where it will not be a safe operating space for humanity. Right? And we've got to change the messaging to tipping points which are created by uh, what we call the science policy. So what are the tipping points where we have the science and the actual transformations we need in society, environment, and the economy so that we can reverse this. And this is, should be the focus. The focus has to be reaching those tipping points through our transformed changes. And the General Secretary and Jeffrey Sachs and everybody has defined these key transforms to changes, which we will talk about during the conference. But I think it's going to be so important that we do that. The second point that the students are making is they're on the scientist side. And in a sense, they're representing us. 
And in every disaster movie, you know, the scientists aren't listened to, but eventually the scientists have to get into the situation room. Um, and in a sense, this is going to be very, the work of SDSN through its centers, its thematics, through uh, all its members, is very much about that. It's very much getting to the legislator and getting this job done. Okay? There's only one warning sign, though, uh, which I want to give you, is that when we all use this term, the moonshot, this is being used now in, in European policy for the next round of Horizons Europe funding, it's, we have missions to achieve these transformations in, in core areas, right? But one of the scientists on the moonshot was a woman called Hamilton, and her job was software. And she was given the task of doing the backup so landing gear, backup software on the shuttle before it landed. Now, the problem with that job was that normally backup computers are two football pitches, but she had to do onboard or in-flight science. She had to do new science, right? And when we get into the situation room, when we start to do our work to get this job done, working with policy and working with young people, and particularly with all the MDP students who are young professionals capable of doing this, we have to be capable of being doing in-flight science and to be that adaptable and that good, right? And it's going to be, we are going to be called on very, very soon, and this is what this conference and this is what all this network is about, okay. Now, um, so I want to introduce you to Henriette Gierger. So as a European, this is a very European session for the first session, which is great. Um, Henry Greta is the Director of People and Peace in DJ DEFCO. Um, what's great about her role is that she is the advocate or she has responsibility in the European Commission for all the People and Peace SDGs. That's her job, right? And it's very important. And Europe will take a lot of leadership in this. She's great background. She's worked throughout the, Europe, the UN system, both in the Secretariat and UNICEF. She's worked in all the elements of the European, like European Council, the European Commission. Um, and one of the things that's of interest to all the students here, particularly outside of Europe, she runs the Erasmus Mundus program. And I've had some fabulous students coming to UCD doing their masters and PhD who've come uh, to do their masters uh, funded outside of Europe, from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, coming to Europe to do their studies funded through the Erasmus Mundus, and she is responsible for that, which is going to nearly triple its budget in the, in the coming years. So without further ado, have a great conference, and I'm going to introduce you to Henrietta Gerger. Maybe you could give her a round of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today at Columbia University. And on behalf of the European Commission, I would like to thank all those who were involved in the preparations of this event, in particular the United Nations Development Program and Columbia University for hosting today's Kapuczynski Development Lecture. It is my great privilege to welcome for this lecture two prominent SDG advocates today, Her Majesty the Queen of the Belgians, as well as Mr. Edward Ndopu. Let me spend just a few words to tell you what these lectures are all about. Since 2009, the European Commission has been associated with UNDP and some of the most prestigious universities around the world to finance and promote a series of lectures that touch upon the many facets of international cooperation and development. And so far, more than 130,000 people have followed them. The development lectures honor the name and legacy of the talented Polish journalist and writer, Richard Kapuczynski. He's often quoted as saying that a journey, after all, neither begins in the instant we set out, nor ends when we have reached our doorstep once again. It starts much earlier, and it is really never over, because the film of memory continues running on inside of us, long after we have come to a physical standstill. This is very much like the journey of the Sustainable Development Goals, our collective efforts to attain the 17 goals by 2030. 
The message of the SDG Summit this week is clear. We have to considerably accelerate to meet our targets. The newly elected president of the European, or the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, just declared the EU's firm intention to be a front runner for the SDG implementation, both at home and abroad. Now allow me to give you a brief insight in how the European Union and its member states are responding to the 2030 agenda through our international cooperation. Two years ago, the EU adopted a new European consensus on development, setting out a shared comprehensive policy framework for the EU institutions and its member states gearing our development cooperation in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. And just a few months ago, we published our first joint synthesis report outlining how we are delivering on this vision, transforming lives and communities on issues such as gender, youth, and very importantly, climate. We are also putting the SDGs at the heart of our most recent flagship ini initiatives, such as our Africa-Europe Alliance for Sustainable Investment and Jobs, the European External Investment Plan, and the EU-UN Spotlight Initiative. Our External Investment Plan is helping leveraging private investment through blending of grants with loans and guarantees. And we set ourselves a target of 44 billion euros of new investments by 2020 in Africa and the European neighborhood. And we have proposed to go up to 500 billion euros across the developing world between 2021 and 2027. The Spotlight Initiative is investing 500 million euros to eradicate violence against women and girls around the globe, partnering with the UN. SDG 5, gender equality, has become a top priority for the EU, as it is a key enabler for the attainment of all other SDGs. You may know that the EU and its member states, with close to 60% of ODA, is the biggest global provider of official development assistance in the world. And while ODA remains a key tool to fight global poverty, it is abundantly clear that this is entirely insufficient to meet the tremendous and growing needs. This is why we increasingly work with a mix of aid, private investment, and domestic resource mobilization. And we are partnering with all other development stakeholders in implementing the SDG agenda. By working hand in hand with our partners within a strong multilateral system, this is